Some of the next few examples that we'll be looking at is basically linked to employment. So where an employer gives you certain amounts which are then exempt. So the first one is section 10.1 N.A. capital A. Right, and this section tells you that if your employer gives you a uniform or an allowance for a uniform. Now allowance always means cash, so cash for a uniform. So remember the gross income definition says that you can receive a total amount in cash or otherwise. So if your employer gives you a uniform, they're giving you something which is an otherwise. And they give you cash for a uniform, it's obviously cash. Now, that amount that you receive from your employer, you are receiving because of your employment, so it will be gross income. That amount can then be exempt if this uniform that you've received is a condition of employment. So it means that your employer must require you to wear a uniform. It's not just you that decide you want to wear it. So you really love the company that you work for, you decide to wear their branded merchandise, right? That is, if it's not a condition of employment, then this doesn't count. Or, and, sorry, it must be a special uniform which is clearly distinguishable from other clothing that is not a uniform. So that's why I've given you this example. You can clearly see this is a police officer and you can clearly see that this lady works for what company? We don't know. That's exactly what the issue is. Her clothing, there's no logo or something here somewhere that says, look and I work for whatever place. If it was, right? So if there was a logo that says, I work for, <laughs> I don't know, um, ABC Limited, and you could clearly see it. Oh, everybody that works at ABC Limited wears white clothing with the logo on it. Then it would be exempt. And then just if they give you an allowance or they give you cash for uniform, it must be reasonable. So they can't say that this uniform over here for the police officer is 10,000 rands to buy one uniform. I'm not talking about the weapons, just the uniform, the clothing. And then the actual worth is only a thousand. You can't say that's reasonable. If they do that, then the full ten thousand will be included in your gross income, and only the reasonable por portion will be exempt. But they'll have to tell you that in the question because the uh, commissioner SARS will have to tell you that. The next one is a relocation benefit in terms of section ten one N B. So this is where your employer says you are living in Johannesburg at the moment. We want you to move down to Cape Town. We are going to pay for your moving costs. That amount that they pay for your moving costs will be included in your gross income, but some of it can then be exempt. What can be exempt? Now, the Act is a little bit open about it. It says it's the, um, the following costs will be exempt. Transporting the employee and members of his household and personal goods. So that's the moving cost, putting it in a delivery truck or a, a moving a truck or van and then moving it. The selling cost of the previous resident and the settling in cost of the new residence. So all of the costs that you had to pay to agents and so on to sell the old house and have it valued and so forth. And then the setting in, you, uh, setting in costs. So this will be the cost of connecting the phone, getting um, new curtains. The, the costs which are basically considered, um, I almost want to say essential to live in. And then they might also say that the house that you want in Cape Town, you can't immediately move into it and you have to stay in a hotel so the employer pays for it. That will also be exempt as long as it's not for more than 183 days. So they'll only pay for the first six months will be exempt. Now, commissioner will only accept costs that are reasonable. So this is something that you'll have to prove then and say this is reasonable, but they'll tell you also in question. So what do they accept in practice? They accept school uniforms, replacement of curtains, registering mortgage bonds, transfer duty, telephone, water, electricity, agents fees, and so forth. Can you see guys, those are all considered essentials. What is not essential? The cost of improving a residence. So you say to your boss, listen, I'm living in Johannesburg, but I want to move down to Cape Town. And when I move down to Cape Town, I want one of those nice big houses. And in front of the house, I want one of those water features where there's those little boys that urinate into a pond. Those little statues. I want that. That, unfortunately for you, will not be exempt in terms of Section 10.1 NB.